Welcome back to the Gift Up Podcast. Let's get to the week five over-unders to bet, starting with Miami versus Tampa. Over-under set at 48. I'm going to bump that down to 41 and go over. On the Tampa Bay side, offensively, they're going to want to come out and prove to everybody that they're still top dog in the NFL. That New England outing wasn't the greatest for them offensively, so I think they're going to be re-geared, ready to rock. And then when you look at that Miami defense, it's, I'm not saying it's bad. Like in the front seven, they got good rotational pieces. They got some good players on the back end in the secondary. But it's not like they have elite players. It's not like they have an elite pass rush. And Tom Brady, with time in the pocket with those weapons, he's going to put up points in a statement game at home. So I think they get 28 or more. And then Miami, you know, even though Brissett's quarterback, they still have weapons at receiver. The Bucks just put Carlton Davis on IR. So, again, I'm not crazy about Brissett, but I think he can put up some points as well. At least get to 21. That's all we really need from them to push that over. And that's my vision on that game. Um, Tampa obviously gets to win at home. Next game, Tennessee versus Jacksonville. Over-under set at 48.5. I'm going to bump that down to 41.5 and and go over. I see points going on from both sides. Um, With Tennessee's defense, you don't have an elite pass rusher. Even though Bud Dupree is going to be back in the lineup, they don't have anybody that's like, you know, not. I know everybody can't be like TJ Watt, Melvin Inger, and players like that. Tennessee really doesn't have a player like that. So Trevor Lawrence, we, he has proven that with time in the pocket, he can get it down the field. They still got good players at receiver, even with DJ Chark out. They have Marvin Jones. They have LaVisca Chennault, who's looking really damn good this year. So Jacksonville is able to put up some points. And then from Tennessee, yeah, Julio Jones may not be in the lineup, but they are getting A.J. Brown back. They are going to be able to pound the rock pretty easily with Derrick Henry because that Jacksonville defensive line is pretty damn bad. Uh, Jacksonville really doesn't have a whole lot left in the secondary either. So if Tennessee can't put up points in this game, then they really have to reevaluate their coaching staff. So bumping that down to 41 and a half, I feel pretty comfortable for the over. Next game, Browns versus Chargers. Set at 47, I'm going to bump that to 54 and go under. You've got a Browns defense that, in my opinion, is still being underrated. From top to bottom, they're really good. They're extremely deep in the secondary. And that's what you need when you go up against a Chargers team like this. With all these weapons at receiver, Mike Williams playing extremely good football right now. Obviously, Keenan Allen, that t- the tight end group with Jerry Cook. Um, you need to have a deep secondary, and the Browns have that. They have good safeties. They, they're deep at corner. I think they're able to combat that. I think they're also able to get pressure on Herbert. I think Chargers fans are getting a little bit too comfortable with how easily they're winning games, moving the football. This Browns defense is the best one they've played so far. And then from uh, a Browns perspective offensively, I think they're going to lean heavy on Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. You know, Baker Mayfield, I think he can control this game. You know, maybe go, you know, 17 for 21. Uh, you know, 200 yards, a couple touchdowns, maybe three, but nothing crazy. Nothing that's going to go to 28, 30 points in this game to push that over, uh, especially with that torn labrum. It'll slow him down a little bit even so. Uh, so I'm looking more of a defensive game here uh, in, this, in this particular matchup. So the under I like. Next game, Bills versus KC, over under set at 56 and a half. I'm going to bump that to 63 and a half and go under. It's a ton of points. I know both of these offenses can be electric, but I think they're going to play each other tough. Just look at that playoff matchup in the AFC championship game. It wasn't a 30 to 30 type game. You know, these teams got too much pride. They're going to come out, try to hit you in the mouth. And both teams on the defensive line have gotten better. You know, they have a good pass rush. Um, Obviously, you know, the the Chiefs added Jaron Reed up front. You couple that in with Chris Jones and Frank Clark. The Bills investing in the draft with Gregory Russo, Basham, you know, and then also the Bills defensive line has gotten better this year with Star Latule rotating on the interior, um, Ed Oliver getting better. So these quarterbacks aren't just going to be able to hang back there with ease and put up 30 plus. I don't think that's going to happen in this game. You got two really good defensive minds going at it as well, Spagnolo and Sean McDermott. So Again, 63 and a half is just way too many points, and I feel comfortable going with the under. Next game, Saints versus Washington, over under set at 43 and a half. I'm going to bump that to 36 and a half, and I'm going to go over. We saw the Giants move the football pretty easily against the Saints. 
And right now, T- Tyler Heineke is looking pretty good. So I don't see any reason why he can't come into this game and put up some points as well. McLaurin is playing out of his mind. They got Gibson pounding the rock. I think that they can be efficient offensively. And at 36 and a half, it's not like they're going to have to score 28 plus. We're just asking for 21 from both these teams. I think that's more than manageable. And then this Washington defense, even though I still respect it and I think it's going to get better, it, it has shown that if you're able to keep that dominant defensive line off your quarterback, you can make plays down the field on them. And I think Jameis Winston can do that. I think they're going to get Kamara involved in the pass game. I think they're going to be able to pound the rock a little bit, and that'll open up things down the field. And again, we're not asking for a ton of points. We're just asking for 17-21 to push this over. Next game, Detroit versus Minnesota, over-under set at 49. I'm going to bump that down to 42 and go over. My main thinking with that game is Minnesota is going to put up a lot of points. Even if Delvin Cook doesn't play, Detroit is so depleted right now. With Romeo Okwara out up front, you know, trading Jamie Collins, they and all the injuries they got in the secondary, I just don't see how they're going to be able to do much. And you got Kirk Cousins with time in the pocket. He's going to get it to Thielen. He's going to get it to Jefferson. They're going to be able to run the football even if Madison's in the lineup. I just see Minnesota exploding at home. They really should have no problem putting up points. They really should be able to put 28 up or more. And then Detroit, they do their part just enough to get it to go over. I don't think we're going to see a ton of points from Detroit, but you know, if they can get to 17-21, that's really all we need for them. We don't need to have Jared Goff go out there and throw for 300. Next game, Giants versus Dallas, over under set at 52. I'm going to bump that down to 45 and go over. We've seen Daniel Jones before be able to move the football against that Dallas defense. It's not like Dallas has a dominant pass rush, so Daniel Jones with time in the pocket, he's going to make work. He's going to make it happen. Saquon Barkley is getting better as well as the weeks go on. And then from a Dallas perspective, you know, that Giants defense has a ton of issues, and Dallas has nothing but weapons, good offensive line. you got Zeke pounding the football and Tony Pollard. you got, you know, three good receivers uh, for Dak to throw to. So – if Dallas can't put up points in this game, then they got to reevaluate what they're doing. They really should have no problem. So at 45, uh, I feel pretty comfortable. Both teams score over 21. It goes over. And we'll cap it off with Green Bay versus Cincinnati over under set at 51. Bump that down to 44 and go over. Green Bay, they really need to kick it up here a notch and keep this train going. And I think they can do that. You know, They have a lot of weapons at receiver. You know, Devontae Adams, Scantling. Um, Aaron Rodgers is going to make work here. He's going to make it. And then you got Aaron Jones pounding the rock as well. Uh, I just, I really think this Green Bay offense is just going to keep getting more and more used to each other, build the chemistry as the weeks go on, and they're going to be efficient and they're going to start scoring over 21 points each game. And then Cincy against that Green Bay defense, you know, even with Mixon banged up, I do not think that Joe Burrow is going to be under a ton of pressure. And he has proven already that when he has a little bit of a support system and things are clicking, he's pretty damn good. So being that it's only 44, since he does have some good weapons on the outside, you know, Jamar Chase looking really good already in his rookie year. Burrow with time, they should be able to score uh, in the 20s. So with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos and subscribe. I'm going to try to get the updated spread video done for you guys today as well and then tonight when i get off work i'm going to do the creation of the spread for week six because like i said it's never too early to look ahead so with that make sure to hit the like button share the videos and subscribe